Interesting. What do you feel when you're getting, like, doing the bondage? It's a mixture of uh, a lot of different emotions, but I think what is... Mm, many people, if they try it, we call them bondage people and not bondage people. So you either get it or you don't. And so if you get it, you feel a lot of... Um, sensations like you are totally held as a it's like related to some regressive uh, hypnosis when you are a newborn and you are in this uh, comfortable place where you don't need to hold your own weight and you are completely taken care of it's like very healing or weird experience i'm offering less lessons for beginners so people feel can reach can? out <laughs> you want to feel like a baby <laughs> yeah <laughs> <laughs> i wonder if people like on the floor i finally got it <laughs> yeah. Like, oh shit, how do I get out? All right. Thank you guys for joining us on today's episode of Unemployable Podcast. Today we have Valentina Rita Bova with us. Thank you for joining us. Thank you. Was that good? Yeah. That you want me good? to do it again? No, it was good. All right, cool. <laughs> How do you say um, Cam sucks in Russian? <laughs> it's the same. <laughs> <laughs> well, Damn. Cam sucks. Universal, baby. <laughs> oh, um, knew I spoke. Hated <laughs> around the world. <laughs> yeah. yeah. It's, it's global. Uh, <laughs> yeah. It's global. <laughs> I said that and he just realized that. Yeah. And he was like. He tattooed yeah. it on somebody. I mean. I oh, did. Yeah. yeah. I still haven't posted that. I need to post that. One, a client came in and asked to get Cam Sucks tattooed on them by Cam. I did it. <laughs> I, did it. <laughs> I did it. You have very similar clients that request the same thing, no? Like what? Like they get tattoos of you? Yeah. Way cooler, Cam. Yeah, that's way cooler. <laughs> Someone got a Cam it's Sucks so tattoo. Not like a cool yeah, portrait yeah, yeah. of me. <laughs> when did you get the first request to do a self-portrait? That's actually a sad story because the first client I had, he passed away. Well, good job bringing it up, Cam. Yeah. <laughs> Starting off with a sad story. That was Danny. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. What, what about the other first time? <laughs> <laughs> okay, when's the last time? Okay, <laughs> <laughs> or your favorite Let's time? Ask again. <laughs> so we've seen like online that you've done like a couple tattoos of yourself on people. Uh, do you have like a memorable one, like maybe one of your more favorite clients you've done that on? Or like when it started? Yeah. Um, the, the first one was many years ago, about ni eight, nine years ago in Russia, or maybe ten. Um, after that, I had a few clients in uh, Europe, a few in US. Um, I think one of the last works was memorable, like uh, the client is very nice, he wants to continue and make a cool project, like sleep with him. Um yeah, I don't know how many I already did, but of course it's very flattering that people. Yeah, wanna. yeah. What about like when people first started to like ask you to do that? How did you feel? Were you like very about the idea? Were you hesitant at first? No, I totally felt okay with it. Yeah, <laughs> you're like, yeah, yeah, let's run it. <laughs> yeah. Do you choose the picture? Um, mostly yes. Most yeah. of the time for all tattoos that I do. Gotcha. And I don't know if this is a myth, but I overheard someone say it. Do you look in a mirror while you're, get, while you're doing tattoos of yourself? Yeah, I did it like twice, I think. That's awesome. Myth busted. <laughs> Boom. <laughs> yeah, when uh, we were in new, at the New York convention, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, we went to the New York convention. Mm -hmm. I was like, oh, like I heard Val was here. So we went and f tried to find her. Uh, and she was at her booth tattooing a, a portrait of herself using a mirror as a reference. That's insane. And Chris... <laughs> Chris was there, yeah. We were like, we were like, what the fuck is going on? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I was like, yeah, if I do that all the time too. <laughs> no, it was the first one, and one time after that, I did it on tattoo seminar as well. Yeah, in front of like students. Did you get a lot of people coming up to the booth? Because it was kind of like a cool presentation you were doing, right? Mm, not too many people, because I'm, I think, unfortunately, not being from US, uh, your background kind of makes you not as well with marketing, not as good. Gotcha. So I think I could make more of a deal out of it, but I was just tattooing, so not too many people understood the concept. So it was like a hidden gem at the convention. <laughs> yeah. Oh, man. I wish I went to New York. I, I really feel, since I moved to the States, I feel like I need an agent. An <laughs> agent? <laughs> like for many, many things. I just need some agent, because I, I know how to do my work, but I'm so like out of business or anything like that. Yeah. 
Kyla's looking for someone new, so. <laughs> <laughs> Just kidding. I love you. <laughs> um, now, I know you've worked in, like, a lot of different places, and, and you just said, like, oh, things are, like, different uh, in the U.S. I mean, it started, your career started in Russia, right? Yes. And then how old are you when you got involved with tattooing or art? Twen- uh, like, 22, 23 tattooing, and art uh, always since right, childhood. Right, since you were young. Mm-hmm. And did you know that you wanted to pursue tattooing when you were no. younger? No, no, not at all. That my mother found one um, letter that I wrote or something as in school, and I was saying that I might become a tattoo artist. I totally don't remember oh this. Oh, wow. <laughs> <laughs> I was maybe 10 when I wrote it. 10? Yeah, because I was drawing, I remember, a dragon with a black, like, ball thing, or how is it called? I don't know. Um, black dragon on the leg of somebody in summer camp. That's oh, like a, the, a pen, a ballpoint pen. Uh, see, yes, yeah. this one. Nice. <laughs> yeah. Nice. Uh, but no, I never really planned. It was just after I finished university, graphic design. I didn't know what to do. I didn't want to work in the office. And um, one friend offered me, he said, you should try tattooing. And I thought, okay, why not? And then it went super fast by itself. Nice. And did you do like a, a apprenticeship? Mm, no. Did you work? I did like... Maybe third or fourth tattoo was already realistic. I tried at home by myself. You're like, fuck <laughs> it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So it, did it start at the at your house? Yes. And how did you get all the supplies? I just bought it. We have many tattoo supply stores that are offline. Yeah. Like quite many. I just found one guy through a tattoo artist that tattooed me, bought some Chinese equipment, was afraid to turn it on for a week because it's <laughs> like technology. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and then uh, I did a... First tattoo with help of one tattoo artist, and okay. then I just worked half a year at home. So, like another artist was kind of like shadowing and helping through the process. He just showed me how to build a station and how to do outline and coloring. Oh, cool! Were you living by yourself when this was all going on? Or you I lived at my parents. And your parents? <laughs> how they feel about that? Uh, they fe- they were processing still that I cut my tongue, so they didn't. <laughs> <care much. laughs> Fair. They hadn't caught up yet. Yeah. 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 Do they have any tattoos? No, but my aunt she will be. Maybe 80 soon I tattooed her once. That's oh, awesome. Nice. Yeah. Was it your face? Wait, we're going to skip over the tongue. We're going <laughs> to oh, skip sorry. over the tongue. Yeah, you're right. Let's double back. Let's double back. Your tongue. Mm. When do you cut your tongue? 18. 18. Yes. Damn. That, uh, that's cool to yeah. me. Yeah, <laughs> yeah that's, that's really that's cool. That's borderline personality. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, this was before university. Yes. Okay, and were you? Did you have tattoos and stuff? At eighteen, also, I got first tattoo, and then later a few small, but nothing too visible until like tattooing. Okay, so you were, you know, kind of involved in the industry, or at yeah. least interested yeah, in I tattoos did, like, and skydiving jumps oh, a couple okay. of times, and uh, listened to this heavy music, so it was all around tattooing. Right, right. All at the same time, like listening to metal while jumping off of me. <laughs> Tattooing people. <laughs> <And Right. that. laughs> Splitting tongues. That's so awesome. So what was the uh, tongue splitting process like? Because this was a little bit ago. It was uh, one of the first years, I think, that people started making in my country. Um, so it was one assistant holding the halves, and he almost passed out at the very he beginning. He did? Yeah. And oh, then they put injections, <laughs> and uh, with a scalpel, it goes in the middle and cuts outside <laughs> i was thinking opposite but it's like from middle to out but uh, you know so yeah, yeah. and uh, then stitches and then one week i was destroyed <laughs> yeah <laughs> <laughs> and then in one month i went uh, to continue teaching children french <laughs> <laughs> hold on <laughs> where have you been this whole time <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> home <laughs> no i told them i had dentist surgery so i <laughs> yeah, speak yeah. weird so so like while you were get so you decided like hey this is cool I want to get this done the tongue yep. right how soon after that decision did you get it just like all decisions in my life that yeah. day about <laughs> yeah. <laughs> just yeah. about yeah. so uh, when they were like doing it was there any point where you're like maybe I shouldn't have done this no no you're like yeah I'm in no, I'm I was like just suffering and the when I come to some surgeries, I always feel like, okay, I need to give up my trust. It's like from bondage, same idea that you give up all your trust. Yeah. And you just sit there and uh, enjoy the process that somebody else navigates. You're just like right. receiving the experience. You're out of control. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Interesting. So then you get, you're done with the procedure. Your mouth is all stitched up. Were you like excited to have it? Mm, 
after a while because the first <laughs> days was hell of course yeah, yeah. <laughs> i mean i didn't need painkillers but it was very yeah hard yeah did anyone else did you see anyone else get it mm, or did i saw maybe a couple people before i did it and then so you from knew the what to expect no we didn't speak too much with them Maybe they couldn't speak Maybe to they you. Maybe they couldn't speak. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> How was it? <laughs> What's up, Yeah, because when I got mine, um, t- typically I don't make decisions like this, but it it was kind of like your process. Mm. They were like, I got bullied at the shop, and they're like, you should get it, because like everyone at the shop had it at the time, and our buddy was in town. Mm. So like, you should get it tonight. And I was like, fuck, all right. Never (laughs) once was I like, man, it would be cool to have a split tongue. Mm. (laughs) I never thought that was cool. I was just like, you know, whatever. That's weird. I said to maybe a couple of guys that it's a good idea for men to make it, and uh, they made it next day also. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So uh, maybe that's how it has to be. Word of mouth. After this interview, everybody. (laughs) Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, get your tongue split is what we're saying. So, because I... I remember it had come to the end of the day and I had been telling everyone all day I was going to get it. So like I couldn't back out. Mm. And then (laughs) same thing. They did it. You know, someone assisted on the back. And I remember when they like pulled my tongue, I was like, give me that (laughs) back. (laughs) Give me my tongue back. back. (laughs) You know? And then our, yeah, same thing. Boy, like cut it. You know, obviously it was, uh, they did the injections and then, uh, Stitched it up, and I remember like t- 10 minutes into the procedure, I s- was like realizing what was happening. Before that, I wasn't thinking about it. I was just like, all right, let them do their thing. But I was like, you're getting your tongue split. This is a, a process. The, the, and they all lied to me. They said, it's, it's easy. You could fucking tattoo two days after. Some people eat same day. Yeah. I don't know how. And... uh and then you weren't around for this when I got mine, right? No, you had yours done. Right? Yeah, yeah. So we were done, and I remember I'm standing outside. I'm all stitched up, and not I didn't like regret it, but I was like, "Why do you do this?" <laughs> you know, because I knew I'd have to like deal with the healing. Yeah. And then the next morning, I woke up, and there was like blood everywhere on my pillow, <laughs> and I was like, oh, "Off to a good start," you know. <laughs> And then it just kept getting more and more swollen. My second day, I don't think I could fully close my mouth. I don't remember. (laughs) Which was fucking (laughs) It was purple, I remember. Yeah, Yeah. Yeah, from everyone that I've seen that has got one, is just miserable. Yeah, and I'm like looking at myself in the mirror. I'm like, I'm not a doctor, but this looks bad. (laughs) Yeah, one of ours just had it. Indigo. Their head, yeah, her head was just on the table all day. Yeah. Like, did not want to move. I had Didn't want to talk. I lived still with my parents, and my father had the doctor come in. Uh, because uh, in Russia it's easy that doctors come to your place or ambulance or all yeah. this. It's super easy. Uh, so I went to the doctor and I handed them a note where I write, like, could you please have a look? I cannot speak. Like, I did this stuff and it doesn't he- heal as I expected because people said it's, like, more easy. Yeah. Could you please have a look? And I remember she looked at me and she was like, it's uh. still healing and just left. <laughs> <laughs> she's, she's like, do you know she called the church. split? <laughs> <laughs> You're missing the middle part she of your tongue. I don't know if you knew this. Yeah, my mine was bad, my healing. Um, and I think my friends w- were too. They just lied. Because uh, it was like days. I didn't eat probably until the third or fourth day. Mm, yeah, like yogurt. Yeah, or like chicken broth. Like That sucks. You just feel like shit. Yeah, I had an appointment booked the whole week. Uh, and then day two, I was in here trying to tattoo. I was so miserable. I looked at my client. I said, hey, I'm so sorry. If you let me reschedule. We were only like an hour in. I was like, if you let me reschedule this, I will finish it for free. I'm sure <laughs> I it just don't want to do like it that. today. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it didn't. It sounded like, <laughs> <laughs> You write a note on a skin. You wrote it on the iPad. <laughs> no, I, te- I texted. I texted. I was like, free, free. Go away, free. <laughs> All right, Stephen Hawking's on my I'm in. <laughs> I want to go to the beach. <laughs> um, and then she was so sweet. She said, 100%. I canceled my appointments for the rest of the week. Um, and then I just stayed home. 
And I remember, like, being on the couch trying to be distracted by TV and, like, knowing just from, like, healing other things that, like, it wasn't, this wasn't going to be over for days. You oh, know? yeah. Well, you had a and I'm just trying to get just... through the hour. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, man. And then that, like, seventh day, I took some of the stitches out. And then I think, like, day nine or ten, I took the, the back ones out. Which once you take the stitches out, it it feels a lot better. Yeah. yeah, yeah. It's not like fully healed. And then I was afraid to like hit my tongue on my teeth for like a month. Mine was like like scar tissue very hard for a month or, so or more. I yeah. was scared that it will stay so like stiff. Yeah, I yeah. I remember I kept like squishing it with my <laughs> finger. I was like, this is always gonna be like to have even like the stitches out. in your tongue. Terrible. Like yeah. you, just like you think, just like just a like mouthful of yeah, shit. It just makes your tongue like stiff or some shit. Yeah, imagine like you have this for these foreign strings and objects in your tongue, yeah. and then your tongue's literally double the size. Yeah, no, thank you. Yeah, yeah. I'm good. Yeah. I'll stick with a taco tongue. Can yeah. yeah. <laughs> what? Yeah. All right. So you're tattooing in the house. Your tongue is healed at this point. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, so you have the look down. You look like a tattoo artist at the at this point. Mm, not too much. No. <laughs> no. Yeah, the tongue split. I feel like that. I that had really nearly no tattoos. No tattoos. Nearly what not. was your first tattoo? A scorpion here before. You're in. Before it was covered. You, you just show him. Listen, yeah. I'm, I can do this. Brothers. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I get it. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so then you're tattooing people. What was? It? Were you nervous? Were you uh, excited, hopeful about the process? What were the feelings going on with those first, you know, couple tattoos? It was scary, of course. Yeah. At the beginning. Were you shaking? Probably. <laughs> yeah. 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 It's called panic shading, baby. It's called adrenaline. <laughs> <laughs> you said or like your second one was realism too? No, not second, but very close, like yeah. third. Early on. Was that like what you knew you wanted to do from the start? Yeah. 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 Because I w how I decided tattooing is uh, I saw some posts on Facebook or like Russian version of Facebook where it was uh, great quality, but it didn't have the volume like we studied in fine arts school. So I saw already... Like, I was assuming that if people can use so many colors and they have some technique that they can apply such quality of a picture means that they could do the volume. It's just they don't know how, so that's why I started. Mm. That's because a great way to like look at it, yeah. Because I saw, like, one no, of the best artists. I didn't know that he's, like, top in the world. Now I know. I will not say the name. And I was like, oh, this is cool, but it doesn't have any volume, so I can maybe try to make more of it. Yeah, that's inspiring. Like, this is beautiful. I think I can do better. No, <laughs> yeah, that's yeah. literally that's what amazing. it is. Like, yeah, you know you're going to yeah. be, like... Uh, an acid to the yeah. industry. Yeah, I saw is what awesome. is missing, maybe. Yeah, in, you're... Um, in terms of de details, maybe the approach when you don't work on the volume as much is better because you can pay more attention to quality of coloring, but then the volume suffers. So in my opinion, it's either one or another if it's realistic. Right. That's awesome. So you are essentially taking these things you've learned um, outside of tattooing and trying to bring them into tattooing. Yeah. And it was very few tattoo artists at that time. So yeah, coming to the question of like big Instagram and following, it's just the right time, right place. Yeah, and uh, timing is so important. Yeah. Mm -hmm. To do a whole talk session on that. But the uh, so this was like a decade ago, yeah. what we're talking about. Mm -hmm. In Russia as well, right? Yeah. yeah. So then you're applying this to the tattoos. I mean, were you, so you had this idea, hey, if I apply this, to tattooing, I think I'll achieve, you know, this goal. Early on, were you trying to apply these methods even to your earliest tattoos? Yeah, sure. And were you were you seeing uh, or achieving this goal where maybe you were, like, hopeful? Like, oh, I think this is going to work? Um, yes, very fast. It was already working well. Just I needed more time to see how it heals, to improve the technique, of course. Yeah. But if like, I my first realistic was the bear portrait and I, I still think it's not so bad yeah cool mm. yeah, I, I was just about to ask that like how many tattoos did it take for you to like be happy with one of them mm. yeah i was always <laughs> already okay with them after yeah. the first three maybe that's awesome because yeah. nice. i do remember like seeing your work a long time ago and it being very good thank you and then people being like yeah she's only been tattooing for a year and then feeling very bad about myself. <laughs> <laughs> you shouldn't. Right now I talk to people about uh, different industries or what to do maybe besides tattooing or anything about businesses. And I'm like, well, I cannot 
I completely cannot drive a car and I cannot see myself doing any business. And people are like, well, but you didn't learn tattooing overnight, so it's, everything takes work. I'm like, actually, I did. That's the problem. I expect <laughs> everything to be easy after that, I <laughs> but <know>. I can't. <laughs> but this doesn't help me 10 years later. Maybe 10 <laughs> years ago, if I was like, at least I can drive a car. <laughs> <laughs> You got to get to the shop, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> but that, that's, that's cool. And, and I, think, I think we don't see that enough. Like, people, well, I guess you can always see it more, but, like, people trying to bring new stuff to the industry rather than just, like, copying what's already there. Or I was having a whole argument with Alex the other day on this. Um, but I think that's what... I think there's just something to be respected about that, and there's something that makes you a different artist by doing that. Like in, and this is just my opinion. If you want to be like the greatest or one of the greatest, like you have to think outside the box, bring something from the unknown, and bring something new uh, to the industry. Like if you only copy what's already there, even if you get really good at it, I don't think you're ever like going to be one of the greatest. You know what I mean? Mm. Like, I think when we look in, like, any industry or, or, or anything in that topic, people that I think of as the greatest are people that brought stuff to that space or that industry yeah. that had never been done before. Like pioneers. And people, right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. We're talking about tattooing in Russia coming up. How long were you tattooing in Russia? Maybe five years. Okay. Something like that. Maybe so really, like, got your bearings. That's, mm. like, where it started, tattooing. Yeah. Were you tattooing full-time from the beginning? Yes. No, I like d I did also teaching, like, a tutor for maybe a year. Okay. French, what were you teaching? French painting and drawing. Oh, yeah, French with the tongue. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> French with the tongue. Were you, you were teaching French in Russia? Uh, yeah, for kids that studied in my school and other French schools. When did you learn French? In school. <laughs> <laughs> Damn, you must, that must have stuck. I took French we for eight years in school, yeah, and no, I don't know any of it. We had ten years, six times a week, so I understand Damn. French quite well. Ah, oui, oui. <laughs> <laughs> oh, That's all I got. Uh, yeah, I don't remember any French. Um, I told you, they the only way to go to the bathroom, you have to say, Cam sucks en français. <laughs> <laughs> Croissant. <laughs> Croissant. <laughs> I never went to the bathroom. They say you have to say it in French. I'm like, I can hold this shit. <laughs> es, que je peux leur yeah, that's exactly what I wanted to say. <laughs> yeah, I remember that because I used the bathroom a lot. I, I, had can to go say that, I can say that in Spanish. <laughs> say it. Necesito ir al baño. Oscar. Yeah. <laughs> I got to use the bathroom. I used the bathroom a lot. <laughs> it was the only thing I learned in Spanish, too. <laughs> nice. How to use the bathroom. Fluent dog. So, because you speak a few languages, right? I speak primarily English lately, but yes. <laughs> <laughs> so French, Russian, English. You said a little Italian, a little, a little Spanish. Spanish. Yeah, German. German. No, not well, but also. Parcel tongue. Mm -hmm. Kim has like 60% English. Yeah. I think I have 70. And that's about it. That's it. Well, in Spanish, you just spoke Spanish. <laughs> I can, I can like, understand, like, a Spanish conversation. I can't speak it. I've been around so much Spanish between, like, best friends, uh, mom's yeah, friends, yeah. girlfriends. It's, like, I can understand a conversation. I just can't speak it. And then uh, what were the first couple uh, years, like, tattooing? Were you, you eventually moved to a shop? Yeah, after a half year, I went to one studio where they trained me to do more, like, outlines and to tattoo more traditionally, like, properly and uh, pay attention more to the quality but maybe after a year I realized that this method that they teach me doesn't work with volume how I see it so that's when I had to come up with my own way and I started tattooing from white pigment um, and the uh, guys that were teaching me they were scared to see my process and I still keep the same like uh, steps that it starts with white and very messy layers um, so you start with your highlights and work your way back yeah and that after like already a year, I came up with it because it was m my only way to build the volume the way I wanted. Yeah. So like traditional way of tattooing, starting with black outlines doesn't really work for me. Right. And then working your way into the highlights. Into dark. Well, yeah, no, I mean yeah. the traditional yeah, yeah, yeah. way. Yeah. 
So you have this new process or way of tattooing. I'm sure that the people you're, you said the people you were working with didn't really like it. Yeah. They're they were like, scared of wrong. how it looks. The, yeah. Right. Because it takes some time and it's also like layering. Yes. But it just looks messy in the beginning and scary. Right. Creepy. And then will you do it and like let it heal and do it go in more and more? No, no. Not no? necessarily. I, I like to come back to attach something to not attach, retouch something. Yeah. And uh but no, it's straight away can be done in one session. It's just when I start with lights, I feel like it's easier to do softer shading. So just because I'm impatient, it was my way to do that. Gotcha. Because the damaged skin takes the ink faster, and so it's more smooth. Oh, yeah. You're right. So you Were there like more? Oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead. So you get, like, your darker tones a little bit easier. At the very end, I mm-hmm. put dark. Were, you, uh, were there a lot of female artists at this point? Mm? Like, were there a lot of female artists in that area of Russia where you were at? Mm, not many at that time. Not just a handful? Mm. Did you deal with any bullshit being, like, one of the only female artists at the time? Too much, no. I remember one piercer was making fun of me in the one of the first studios just because he could mock me. Like, um, I was not strong to respond something. Right, he's like, ha you start stuff. with white, idiot. <laughs> 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 mm, no, in general, I don't remember many, but... That's things. good. Yeah. yeah. Maybe just blacked it out. <laughs> <Yeah. just kidding>. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, I mean, from an outside perspective, it seemed like you found success pretty early in tattooing. Mm. Uh, like the quality of work was there. Uh, were you able to get the clients in from the beginning? Yeah, it was not too consistent, but enough. Yeah. Right. Enough to make it your career, yeah. right? And then what led to you... You said Russia five years, and then where did you go from there? What led to leaving? Then I moved to Germany to work. And um, France for one year, and then to st- like back to Germany, then States. Why Germany? Because uh, in Europe, it was the best spot for tattooing. Right now, it's oversaturated as well. Yeah. But at the time, was it good? Yeah, it was very good. Cool. Like cost of living and uh, session price, it was super nice for artists. Now I can appreciate it looking back. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and when you moved and you got settled in, were you like, this, is, this was the right move, I'm happy I came to Germany? No, I was actually waiting for my visa to States. I always knew that I want to move here. Um, at least it was my idea because I never could actually visit the country before. The visa was too difficult. Gotcha. So and it was just a concept. Like all my clients told me you should try it in States. You would be really good there and stuff like that. Yeah. And where in the States like did you have your eyes set on? Um, I only knew one person in the U.S. that was like we knew each other for a while. And so that's where I'm still working. It was a contract done with this studio. Gotcha. So it was no choice, just one city, because right. I didn't really know anybody well. And that's you're, you're just trying to get there. Yeah. Yeah. And that was New York? Yeah. So Europe was kind of like the stepping stone to getting to the U.S.? In the original plan, yes. Yeah. So then Germany, how long were you there? Three years, then a year in France, and then a year in Germany. Because you got stuck in France, right? Uh, it was lockdown. I moved. Was it uh, COVID? Yeah. I moved just before the lockdown to study fashion there. And I wasn't stuck now. I just studied one year and came back. Oh, it was right, a year, yeah. year-long year program. So fashion. Yes. Is that the first time that that came into play or you had always kind of... No, it was the first time. I would still like to come back to it one day. Yeah. Because I just learned it and then I got the visa. So I moved and I had to tattoo again more. Yeah. yeah. So uh, what, what does that even look like? You said like you got involved in fashion go to school for it? Yeah, I was studying uh, fashion design, fashion business, and fashion marketing, and uh, there was one other direction that I forgot. Right. Maybe, like, history. Were you also doing, you, you mentioned graphic design at one point. Yeah. That was so in that's Russia. Why it was that was a, in Russia? That's why I went for a year after gotcha. that, because it's close. Gotcha. So you, <coughs> moved, you moved to France. You're like, I'm going to go to school for a whole new industry. Also, I'm going to do all the schooling in French, right? No, it was unfortunately in English. Oh, <laughs> unfortunately. <laughs> <laughs> well, whatever, still another language. The yeah. teachers were like with very strong accents from Belgium, France, so it was very hard to understand some of them. And s- understand <coughs> their English. Yeah. yeah. I don't know, because we didn't have any French students actually there. How did you do? What were, you, what were the grades like? Were they good? Yeah. yeah. 
I'm a if I got a bad grade, I would have blamed it on the accent. <laughs> <laughs> no, with one, with one subject, it was like that. With like history, I was really like, how can I know anything here? Right, I don't, I don't even know what the, the fuck almost. you're saying. Yeah. So you're in France. You did. You were studying fashion. Did you take that anywhere? Um, I started like a micro collection, and then I received a visa here. So I stopped uh, for a while. So what is a micro collection? Uh, it was designed for heavily tattooed people. The concept yeah. was like that. So it was just few pieces that I didn't really sell much and well. Yeah. And it's just post. But was it fun to create? Yeah. And then... But fashion is a lot of work and pain in the ass to develop something that is more like tailored, custom bid, and not like t-shirts, but really difficult constructions. That's a lot of mistakes and a right. lot of... Like really creating something new. Yeah, he's doing Right. Not just like putting something on a t-shirt. Mm -hmm. Right. Do you think Cam would look good in the micro collection? I need to look. <laughs> <laughs> That's kind of cool, though, like clothes designed for people with tattoos. And now, because on your, your Instagram, you have the modeling as well. That's another thing you do, right? Um, occasionally. No? Occasionally. You have the um, the ropes that I never know how to pronounce what it is. Shibari, shibari. Yeah, this is shibari. also from when I was 18. It was my some craziest time probably when I started all of these things. How do you get how do you get involved in that? When did that become a thing? Um, so I was 18 and uh, I saw I collected some photos in this Russian version of Facebook uh, related to bondage. I didn't really know what it was. I just saved what I liked. And uh, one day a man texted me that. He saw these pictures and he would like to take me to an exhibition, art exhibition with photo photography. And he said he wanted to discuss um, some modeling for advertising his restaurants. He had restaurants with two directions of kitchen. And he said, I like the idea of two tongs and having two directions of food. So we did a photo shoot and he marketed it. All housewives were shocked and uh, didn't have any success at all <laughs> for him. Uh, but we went to this photo exhibition and there was a live performance with Shibari. And that's how I got involved. And since that day, I was uh, modeling in this uh, rope school for some years. We did many, many rope shows. So like another school. Yeah. A rope school. Yeah. I didn't even know that's a thing. That's awesome. No, in Tying Russia, nuts. it was big, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I was more. totally in love since yeah. I saw it. Yeah, and then I was in the school. And my first international friends, they were through rope community, not tattoo. Oh, interesting. What do you feel when you're getting, like, doing the bondage? It's a mixture of uh, a lot of different emotions, but I think what is mm, many people, if they try it, we call them bondage people and not bondage people. So you either get it or you don't. And so if you get it, you feel a lot of um, sensations like you are totally held. As a, It's like related to some regressive uh, hypnosis when you are a newborn and you are in this uh, comfortable place where you don't need to hold your own weight and you are completely taken care of. It's like very healing or weird experience transformative experience so you feel a little bit like you're meditating like you're being under somebody's watch constantly and fully and it's like the only condition in real life when you can relax this much as you were in a womb so it's kind of this oh. yeah oh, i didn't know that that makes a lot of sense actually. it's very interesting yeah, it has some pain to it but it's um like recently i tied one girl she told me oh this one type of suspension was the most painful and then she was all shy and be like, yeah, but actually after like seconds of pain, it gets so pleasant for no reason. I'm like, yeah, that's, that's this. Right. <laughs> it sounded like suspension. Kind of Where do you even like start with that? You have to learn, how, like are there um, standard like ties or knots that you learn in the beginning? Yeah, or do you like learn parts of the body? It's a Japanese art, so they have the standard set, uh, how they do it. There's many, of course, versions of it. Um, I learned from different riggers and... Different what? Riggers. People oh, riggers. Who tie. Gotcha. Yeah. Uh, so the most important is only not to damage nerves. So I wouldn't advise anyone to practice it at home and try it by themselves. Right. There are still some good tutorials or YouTube even videos probably where you can start learning it. I know people that learned it during COVID by themselves. But it's always a risk. You need to remember that it's a risk to damage nerves, to get your limbs not moving or something. Uh, but... For example, I'm offering less lessons for beginners, so people You're can reach out. <laughs> <laughs> you want to feel like a baby? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I wonder if people like you want to feel like a baby. You feel like a baby? <laughs> people are at home, they're like on the floor. I finally got it. <laughs> <laughs> like, oh shit, how do I get out? <laughs> <laughs> All right.
Model Citizen used to be cool before Alex started wearing it. Are you tired of being unattractive to everyone around you? Well, not anymore. With the Model Citizen apparel, you'll be beating them off with a stick. Finally, tattoo clothing that is actual quality, that I can wear around and feel good. For real though, the quality of these clothes is top notch. This is like nothing you've ever seen before with a tattoo company. This isn't some Gildan bullshit. These are quality hand-picked clothing. They have everything from vintage styles, oversized clothes, modern tees. Go to themodelcitizen.com. Get them before Alex does. Um, you mentioned earlier about like trust, trusting the people who do that. Because I can only imagine when someone's doing it for you, you kind of you, you have to be like connected with them. Yeah, you can. You give away the control completely. Yeah, I'd be scared. Like I'm like. I'm completely helpless. If this guy wanted yeah. to just, or girl wanted to just put me in a trunk, I'm like, what? <laughs> Do you always hang them, like, from the ceiling? I like to suspend people. Many yeah. many artists say that it's dangerous to do a suspension as a first uh, experience for somebody, but mostly I had good experience with it. One girl, she almost passed out, yeah. She did was you, not prepared. Did you bring your equipment? Uh, no. Oh, oh man, you yeah, fucking you're not lucky piece of shit. Nope. You had to get Adrian for that one. Right, so there's a uh, Home Depot about. <laughs> Wait, is it, is it considered a sexual experience, though? It is a mixture of art and eroticism, for sure. Okay. Because I, because ignorantly. Like you, because you become immediately an, an art object. If you want it or not, it's objectification is a part of BDSM, anyway. Gotcha. Mm. Because some people say I do it only for aesthetics, but. You're already an art object, and it's your own body used for that. So it's BDSM a, a priori. <laughs> right. Have you ever done anything like that? No. You? Mm, I, no, I don't think so. What's like the, like, if someone, like, wanted to start doing that with you, what's, like, the beginner, like, how do you usually start someone with uh, that? People need to have a model that they can practice on because you need a lot of practice to learn it. And okay. that's it, just book like a couple hours uh, Skype session or Zoom meeting session, better in person, of course. Yeah. And so already after the first two hours, there is plenty to explore. And then what about if someone just wants to be the person getting tied up? Um, I don't know. That's yeah. harder. That's more difficult to organize. Well, I just mean like, uh, like if someone, I mean, obviously people want to learn how to be the rigger, right? Is that the term? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Correct. And then I'm sure there's other people that just want to be tied, mm -hmm. right? Yeah, there are some rope events in okay. many cities, at least in Europe, I know. In Russia, a lot of them. But you said, like, to start, maybe suspension isn't the best. So what would you, like, start with? Like, ground floor, part okay. of work. You also mentioned uh, for that one person who almost passed out, you said that she wasn't prepared. How exactly do you prepare? Um, just mentally you need to expect the amount of uh, discomfort and maybe pain. And um, it's also confusing when you have different motivation for it. Depends what, what is your motivation because in her case it was uh, going through some situation that is uh, related to her relationship. So she wanted to make like um, a post about it and all this kind of stuff. So the focus was more on social media than on gotcha. the experience itself. Mm -hmm. And so maybe the emotional transition was not made in the right time or something like that. So because your state of mind changes immediately once your arms are tied up behind your back, you have no longer any duality, left, right. You cannot really take care of yourself. If you're even your nose is itching, you cannot do anything already about it. So you already give up the control. And then uh, when this certain type of pain comes, it's consensual pain. So it's something weird. You get unusual mix of uh, hormones. And so if you're like freaking out from not being able to breathe with her with your chest but more your tummy it's like unusual uh already that can make you a little bit lose your gotcha. gravity i don't think i would be good at that me neither me either i'm like claustrophobic as fuck yeah <laughs> yeah i know not because it's not like that. you can undo it real quick right yeah yeah know. it takes time yeah, like yeah i would start to fucking freak out and be like Ugh. Yeah, and yeah, that would probably make no, it worse. It's It'd probably make it worse. To get panic attacks. Yeah. It's not, it doesn't get the knots are not self tightening. That's the difference from other time. Okay. <laughs> right. Good. You <laughs> cannot no. escape, but you cannot make them tighter. Oh, okay. Good to know.
They yeah. only can sleep somewhere. Yeah, that's the problem. If you move wrong and it goes out, like you move by yourself excessively. <laughs> Yeah, because I can barely sit Indian style without <laughs> I can even, like, for a long time. I like applesauce. Do you scared, guys like start though. with like stretching? Do we start like more bre- breathing, like med- more breathing? meditation? A few yeah. minutes of just um, attunement, it's cool. Oh, that's gotcha. a good question. What's the beginner yeah. pose? <laughs> like, what do you normally start everybody off with? There is plenty of versions. It's lo- almost like asking how do you start having sex. It's so missionary. <laughs> 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 You put it in. <laughs> <laughs> First, you get a boner. Voice. Are you tired of using ink bottles that are spelled correctly? Do you find yourself texting during ad reads for companies? Well, I do. And that's why I use Allegory Black. Are you tired of your black arms looking blue? Do you suck at tattooing and you want to get better? Use Allegory Black. Allegory has normal black and ultra black just when you thought it couldn't get any darker they put out ultra black use allegory ink it's the best ink on the planet go to allegoryink.com and use discount code unemployable for 20 percent off i know it's crazy it's so much money you really should pay full price but we have a discount code right alex that's right so we have we've already have a lot we have multiple languages tattooing graphic design moving around everywhere um the ropes <laughs> uh what else i guess we could dive into teaching like, painting seminar well yeah we can dive into like that now all right dive in so painting you went to school yeah i was in different art schools and took a few seminars on different techniques watercolor oil there is always a place to improve, but yeah, I studied in many places. Yeah, and right now it's like mainly like oil and stuff. Mm, I like also watercolor and graphics, but I want to organize yeah maybe February and uh, seminar painting and drawing related for people that are tattooing and for not non tattoo artists as well, where I could cover um, how to translate painting into tattooing, but also could focus just on purely learning the skill because many people want to do it without being tattoo artists. Yeah. Um, and so if it has a good request, I would think of doing it more often and maybe even more consistently. But also I need to paint more myself. <laughs> so did you, how was it starting the seminars over here in the U.S. once you moved here? For tattoo artists, it wasn't busy at all compared right. to Europe or Russia, not at all. And uh, I think it's because it's easy for tattoo artists to make good money here relatively. Like right now it's oversaturated also. Yes, for yeah. Artists, so it's different. But you think there was more of like a want for it in Europe to really like learn? Much more, yes. Yeah. Mm. Maybe Americans are a little quick to jump over the basics and get right to the money. I don't know. <laughs> I know. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> we know. <laughs> <laughs> he wasn't asking. <laughs> <laughs> no, but I think I think more and more people have been talking, uh, or I've been hearing it a lot more in the U.S., like more than I have prior. You know, like, hey, like, maybe we should get involved with art classes. Maybe we should go back to the basics. Maybe we should really, like, learn some of this stuff. I think it might be because the quality of work is just really improving, and a lot of people are coming here, you know? And because I remember it was kind of, everyone was like, oh, like, this used to be like a thing. Like, oh, in Europe, uh, they do so much more, like, schooling and learning before they become tattoo artists compared to here, and I think some of the um, American artists were like, damn, that's why they're so much better than us over there. We have to do that too, you know? So maybe not as much, but I see a little bit of a peak in interest in those things. You know, now I'm seeing a lot more artists, like, starting seminars and, like, doing that. So I'm hoping that that audience will grow. Mm, Probably, yeah, even though there's already so many artists. So right, right. But I feel like it was so many artists that, like, didn't really give a fuck about learning those basics. Like, they would skip any kind of art school or, or really, like, foundation building. Some just people still do good without it. You're right. You're right. And just, but, like, hop into the tattooing. You know, and maybe, maybe you're lucky and you have a mentor that, like, knows all that stuff or at least can give you a good foundation. But I think a lot of times there wasn't that. You know, just because of, like, where it, it started, you know, um, with, like, a lot of 
people skipping that is what I'm saying. Yeah. But I think I think the seminars are cool. I've even thought about looking into it a little bit more. Maybe not necessarily like with art, but like teaching other things. Uh, but did you when you were having the seminars or like uh, or teaching students? I mean, you had. I mean, people were showing up, even if it wasn't, like, a, a ton of people, correct? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, because when, cause when I saw you in New York, you just finished that one, and it seemed mm -hmm. like there was a good attendance. Yeah, yeah, just one guy, he left after one, two hours and disappeared. That's the only case. Where do you think <laughs> he went? I had one time like this in Russia and one time in the States. I don't know yeah. why. He didn't, probably didn't want to pay the rest of the money, so hello if you're watching us. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I remember. <laughs> I remember. <laughs> Have you ever had um, like problems with any of the students or people learning, like besides them just leaving? No, just these two situations. Yeah. One of them uh, in Russia, he left and he came back overdosed <laughs> to the <laughs> final part. He was completely out of his mind. <laughs> wait, wait, wait. <laughs> what? He overdosed? He just went out. He was flying from Vladivostok to St. Petersburg, which is maybe takes forever. It's like. 12 hours or something, yeah. just to attend the seminar. Then he said, oh, I actually have birthday of some friend. Uh, I'll go tomorrow. And so he left after one, two hours of the seminar, came back in five hours when it was finishing, and he couldn't even, nothing. Then he lost his two mobile phones in this Oh, place. like he was super fucked up. He was up. totally, yeah. Yeah. Mm. All right. Well, maybe he got something out of it. <laughs> <laughs> Who knows? So have you stayed in contact with, like, do you stay in contact with students after the seminar, or is there pretty much, like, here's my class, go out and practice? We stay in touch with a few of them. That's cool. Like, they stay interested in, like, learning mm -hmm. and wanting to get better? Yeah, or even become friends. Yeah, cool. And th is that something you'll continue doing, the seminars? It depends. The request was not really high at all. Right. So I want to switch more to painting seminars. I'll see how it goes. Because these were tattoo seminars? Yep. Okay. And then how would the... And would I, I feel like some students get overwhelmed with this white to black approach that they start uh, with white yeah. pigments. Maybe they don't, don't feel very confident to start it because it's easy to make dirty the colors. Gotcha. Yeah. Because it all because so you already have your lights exposed and now the darks over. Yeah, like I tattoo like a voodooist from backwards totally, so it yeah. scares many people. They're like, wait, this is the opposite of what <laughs> I learned. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yeah, that would throw me off. What else you got? <laughs> huh? What? If? Yeah, that would throw me off. What going negative skin to black? Yeah, hundred percent. Do you think that? Do you think that approach works well for uh, black and gray? I do the same. Yeah. Yeah. I don't start with white. I start with just light gray, and empty skin and light gray. Oh, like with opaques. Mm, no, I mean light wash oh, and okay. then to darker. Uh, I could see how that works though. Yeah, I've heard of some. Yeah, it makes sense in like black and gray because I'll even I, do I'm that where I just run like my light tones throughout the whole piece, and then I run. I my think beam. that's how Johnny tattoos. Yeah, that is how he tattoos. Okay. Like I've seen it done. I don't think that's too uncommon. Yeah, even like I'll map in like my stencil with like the light tones, and then I guess put darks. You know, yeah. Because I'm not like a dark first type of guy really either when I'm tattooing. Yeah, I remember like Matt B would would do that. It was almost like he would like carve out his highlights mm -hmm. first, and then work. Yeah. Backwards. I, c I feel like it forces you to keep some of that skin open, too. You know? Yeah. It's like I'm mapping all these lights and, like, next to this open skin and just not touch that for the rest of it. Yeah. Yeah. I see how it works for black and gray, but color, yeah, that would definitely see how it could throw some artists off, especially if you've been doing color for a long time, too. And then you, like, went to your seminar and it's, like, completely different. Yeah. I guess, yeah, that would throw some tattooers off. Oh, by the way, about the book. Uh, Ooh, this yeah. is the thing that I was sewing myself in, this oh, in study yeah. already. And this was like one of diploma works, this photo shoot. I had to be like a set designer and a fashion designer and awesome. model all in one and photographer, everything. You created <laughs> and you sell this book, right? Yeah, I have some books left. And, uh, oh, that's a cool picture. There are, thank you. There are a few tattoos that I cannot post on Instagram because I like pornographic right. tattoos and you couldn't. But I said, I did a quick scroll. I was like, I did not see this one on Instagram. You like porn, you said? You'll no, see. Keep going. No, no. Flip, baby. <laughs> no, just tattoos related. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But it's more aesthetic, not any kind of. <laughs> yeah, this is a super dope book. If you guys get a chance, go to Val's Instagram. Definitely find more of these. Is that where you sell them off Instagram? Yeah. Yeah. At least, like, find, like, link in bio or something like that.
Yeah, these are really cool. I, I feel like I, it's about to read you, to us. <laughs> that, if you just, Why don't you read us a page? If, you, just, if uh, you don't know how to read. <laughs> <laughs> it's called body language. <laughs> yeah, if you guys want to get like a cool book for your shop. So it I seems like cool. you just never stop creating. Yeah. Yeah, just go, go, it go. It seems like. <laughs> <laughs> You're like, looks can be deceiving. Yeah, the last month, this was not so easy. Right. Is there anything you want to do? Like something you haven't tackled yet, but it's always sparked your interest? I'd like to do surgeries. Surgeries? Yeah, but that's eight years, so it's too big of a commitment and too expensive for Like what type of surgery? Like cosmetic yeah. or like heart mm, surgery? Maybe cosmetic, more like sculpting from people. I would like to do that. But like body mods and stuff like that? No, like uh, beauty surgeries. Okay, cool. Maybe. Yeah. More on the face. I don't think it's eight years. Because I feel yeah, like... I don't even think it's that long in America for that. For beauty, it might be like four. No, to, to cut people. Oh, uh, yeah, to cut. Uh, yeah, to cut people. Yeah. Yeah. I have a scalpel up there. Yeah, a real yeah. one. I'm just saying. <laughs> yeah. Do you have any crazy client stories? <laughs> Where did it come from? No. <laughs> <laughs> crazy client story. Nothing crazy. Nothing crazier than my head. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe any bondage scares. Bondage like is very interesting. One friend she wants that we dominate together. People, I would be very interested, but it's fucking illegal. Oh, uh, yeah. Everything I want to do is illegal. <laughs> no. I know. Listen. They always make the fun stuff illegal. Yeah. Would you ever mix that with tattooing? Somebody, ah, actually. Oh, like mixing okay, bondage with story. tattooing. Story. story. Recently. Story. All right, I'm ready. I don't know if it's also good to make it public, this kind of requests. But Let's one woman asked me to tattoo her sub while he's, like, in bondage also. Wait, wait, tattoo her sub? Oh, okay. And also the design would be totally up to me and he would be not allowed to know it in advance. Ooh. That would be cool. But I said that I'm not in the right mental state to make such uh, risky. Right. Stuff. I mean, that that could be like a whole niche market. Like yep. you open up a shop like specifically for that, that incorporates. Specifically for getting legal problems. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, that, yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. Make tattooing cool again. <laughs> yeah, of course, some men Bondage were asking, ink. oh, can I be tied up while you tattoo me or will you be tied up? Some bullshit. Right. <laughs> they have all kinds of fantasies. Because also the guy who makes my Facebook ads, um, I was a little bit out of it mentally, so he was doing videos, like uh, collecting different videos that I had into one. And all ads that we make on Instagram, at the end, they look too, I don't know, too slutty. <laughs> oh, like sexual Because, <laughs> like, he chooses the strange parts of the video. So, right. like, fuck, they write me totally wrong stuff. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> they don't want tattoos. <laughs> so, they were uh, successful, but not for tattoos. Mm. <laughs> yeah. Not for making money. Right. Some people say, I want to spoil you. I'm like, yeah, so go on. But, you know, nobody <laughs> does. <laughs> we teamed up at Models to Listen to create something really cool for you guys. Got Tell them what we got, yo. That shit's busting. All right. Tattoo Kit has designs, creation, and input from all the artists here. And now you have access to. Wait, even me? All right. Not only is it a place to be inspired, it's a place to create. Check it out on tattoolkit.com. Val, thank you so much for joining us. Thank awesome time today. That was fun. Thanks, was interesting. Thank you, woman of the forest. <laughs> <laughs> you need to write a book on yourself. Yeah. I heard this. She one. did. You, it's right here, yeah. bro. No, no, no. I said write. <laughs> <laughs> Picture book. Of That's beautiful. I yes. want to see the forest and all the stuff yeah. in here. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's okay. Thank you guys for joining us on today's episode of Unemployable, and we'll catch you next week.